Dear students and colleagues, uh, welcome to this fifth innovation talk on LUMSA University. I'm Filippo Giordano, professor of management at LUMSA University in Rome and uh, program director of the master degree in management and finance. Innovation Talks is uh, an initiative, uh, very important initiative of our, our university, arrived at the sixth edition. It's a cycle of webinars uh, aimed to discuss innovation, technology, sustainability, and the future of business in society with experts and opinion leaders in the business community. Uh, innovation Talks are organized by the Department of Law, Economic, Politics, uh, and Modern Languages and the Master's Degree in Management and Finance in partnership uh, with the Association of Alumina, Alumni, Alum, uh, LUMS Alumni. Uh, I thank all the colleagues that uh, are working uh, in order to make this init initiative possible and uh, also uh, the communication staff of our university. Uh, these talks are uh, uh, part also of the teaching activities of some courses uh, such as fintech, entrepreneurship, venture capital, and the business planning. Uh, we are hosting uh, uh, opinion leaders and professionals that uh, uh, help us to understand how our, uh, how our life is changing and uh, will change due to to new technologies and uh, today particularly we are going to talk about uh, uh, how virtual reality uh, will change our life so we are talking uh, about uh, what is called metaverse and so i'm very pleased to introduce and to leave the floor to my colleague andrea Gerenica that uh, will share uh, this uh, very very interesting uh, talks uh, and uh, we'll introduce our our speakers uh, andrea is uh, our professor of uh, entrepreneurship and business startups so thanks andrea for your work in our university thank you filippo it's a great pleasure for me to be here and it's a great pleasure for me to introduce this kind of a topic uh, well you probably heard a lot about metaverse especially after Facebook decided to change the name of the holding of the whole group from Facebook to Meta. So Metaverse became a really popular topic and a buzzword. Well, usually when we are approaching a new technology, we always believe that the technology started like, I don't know, six months before that uh, nobody thought about Metaverse uh, uh, years ago. Actually, this is not true. Usually we are using and we are approaching a technology well, where just where the technology is becoming more mature. So it's really interesting uh, why Facebook decided to push and invest a lot uh, in this uh, new ecosystem that is uh, Metaverse. But actually, we have to understand that Metaverse is not related to Facebook. Metaverse is, uh, you know, just uh, an ecosystem, as I said, like we can describe Internet or, you know, Anyway, a place where we can do a lot of different things. So I'm really happy that today with us, we have not one, not two, not three, but four people from uh, Deep Consulting that are going to describe the metaverse from the beginning to different applications. So we, will, we are going to understand why metaverse is really important, why a lot of companies and not just Facebook are investing in a lot of different metaverses and what's uh, the future of this new ecosystem so i don't want to take time to the first uh, guest uh, that is uh, stefano giallo so i will welcome you stefano hi, hi stefano hi it's, it's really nice to meet you it's really nice to be here thank you for having us uh having me uh so um what is the metaverse uh, and two more questions how is the metaverse and um, when is the metaverse there will be a lot of uncertainty in what you're going to see today and there's so much that is not yet known so i thought we would start from something that is absolutely certain and undisputable and that is that 1999 was the best year in the history of movies there hasn't been one year like that since there hasn't been such a year before 
Uh, and one of the reasons for that is great films came out that defined an age, uh, and one of them was The Matrix. And The Matrix still is one of the iconic representations of a metaverse, a dystopian one, but it's a virtual reality within which we move. Uh, and it's not just The Matrix, actually. If you think about 1995, Strange Days, 1997, Nirvana, 1998, Dark City, in all their different ways, they deal with virtual, alternate, immersive uh, realities. They're all dystopian, but they define the traits of these uh, alternative worlds. Uh, and it's no coincidence that the definition of metaverse actually also came out from a novel in the 1990s, right? So people who grew up, who came of age in that generation, who came of age in that decade, they have a very clear mental picture of what the metaverse is like. Uh, and what that means, essentially, it's an immersive environment. It's an environment that is not real. It's not this physical space. It's virtual and there are different degrees of virtual. The point is uh, that there's a difference between what's real and what's not, and this is not. It's open. You can walk in and out of it. Uh, it's, it's open to certain degrees to everyone. Uh, it's interoperable. That means that what you do on one side of a metaverse on an application can be carried over another side of, of the metaverse. It's not a series of walled gardens and it's persistent. Uh, and by that, we mean that you can uh, switch off your metaverse and the metaverse keeps going. Then you log back in and the metaverse has been going in the meantime, right? So it's a place where you can enjoy a steak and, and you may not know that it's not a real steak, but it feels like a steak and it has that kind of immers immersive experience. So based on that, if that's the mental picture of metaverse, uh, we're not there yet. Uh, we're nowhere near there yet and the question is uh if that's what it is how do we get there one way of answering is well let's look at what are the components that we need to put together in order to get to the metaverse right uh, and what are the building blocks so the building blocks you can look at it this way that there's a degree of hardware there's a degree of computing networking there are virtual platforms there are tools and interchange standards and services and a range of services right and that's one way of looking at it um and, and if you put these components together then that's what it takes to get to the metaverse all of these clearly enables a degree of user behaviors. Uh, you can look at it as slightly differently. Is there is a different set of components and infrastructure and tokens and digital currencies and social media uh, and gaming and assets and online shopping. And, and, and then you can look at it that way. But the point is, whatever mix of components you have, where you get to is that we already have something that is made of these elements, and it's the internet. And the internet is clearly not the metaverse, and yet it's composed of the same elements that we look at when we talk about the metaverse. Right? So how do, because we're not there, we know that we're not there, uh, how do we know when we get there? So there's a different way of looking at it that has been put forward. That is, the metaverse is not a place. It's a moment in time. And it's a moment in time where our digital life becomes worth more to us than our physical life. Now, interesting is not we spend more time in digital life than a physical life, because admittedly, lots of us, starting with lockdown, have been spending more time in front of a screen than outside of it. But it's a matter of more, more of our life, more of what it's worth to us in our life transitions into the digital space, right? Now, the question there becomes, uh, well, how do you measure worth? What's the unit of measure of worth? You know, how, do you, how can you keep track of that transition to know that we're, going, we're actually going to get there? Uh, and this is where we get to the meta metaverse as a how, as a mode, as a way of doing things. And this is the hypothesis in the mode that we share, that the metaverse is a mode, and that mode is entertainment. Uh, and if you look at it, uh, look at life through the lens of entertainment, and that gives you a hint as to what is ready to move to the metaverse. It's a bit unusual, but why is that? because entertainment is how we make sense of new things. So there's this saying that it's the next big thing we start out looking like a toy. And, and, and it's true in many cases, and it was true of computers. Our first, comp first personal computers are being used as for video games. Uh, and this is true for that, it's true for so many other new technologies, innovations, and behaviors. Uh, and why is that? Because that's critical to understanding what's happening with change and significant transformations. Is the first reason is that, uh, entertainment lowers the stakes and you try something new when you try a new frontier you're going to fail a lot uh, and it's a lot easier to give yourself permission to fail if you can say well it was just a game 
there's nothing big at stake it was just we're just having fun we're just toying around and that's how you get to actually this the discoveries that you can use for serious use cases that's number one number two is discover a new frontier experimenting with something significantly different different takes a lot of effort it, it's painful right and it's important that that effort comes with intrinsic reward so yes figuring out what a computer should be is is really painful but at least i get to play a game in doing that which makes it more fun it releases endorphin and it's the same with the metaverse it's figuring out alternative reality parallel earth requires a lot of hard work but it's fun to do you know the process of doing that is fun the third thing is if something is difficult if something is transformative you're not going to be able to do it by yourself and entertainment has the power of bringing people together it attracts communities so it brings the people that you need along the journey right so if you look at it as uh, the metaverse is a big space for transformation so space for transform where transformation happens and the way transformation happens is entertainment then let's look at who is ready to move into the space and and we can say that because they're showing signs that they're becoming more entertaining now, now first and inevitably the entertainment industry was the first move uh, and to invest in the metaverse and that's sort of inevitable uh, it was always the case that the entertainment industry, industry was innovative, but it's definitely very much so now. So you can say it was obvious that the entertainment industry was going to be first outside the gate. Uh, second, and somewhat less obvious, uh, the fashion industry, as you've seen, is a leading industry in the metaverse. Now, you may look at it and you think, this is, for instance, the Metaverse Fashion Week. Uh, it's been happening a couple of days ago. Uh, it took place in the metaverse. It involved a lot of major fashion brands. And you might think it's obvious because fashion has always been interested in what's new. And that is true. But fashion has never been really playful and, and not in the way that it is now. Fashion has never really been open. High end fashion has been defined by being rigorous and closed and curated. So through the presence that they're having in the metaverse, that sends a signal that someone is experimenting with a new kind of fashion. And if you look at what's happening in, the, in fashion outside of the metaverse, that actually confirms it. New creative directors and brands are a lot more playful than they used to be. Even established brands like Gucci have become a lot more playful. So that shows you that there is a world, an industry that is un, about to undergo transformation. And it's no coincidence that it will, a lot of it will take place in the metaverse because it's where we will reinvent things. Uh, number three, it's uh, commerce and shopping. Uh, which has always been, I go to the supermarket, I go to a shop and I buy something. Now, if you look at the rise of live streaming, particularly in East Asia, what is it? It's a spectacle, a live show created out of selling physical goods. Now, to a certain extent, that was the case. Advertising is a way of creating a show out of selling something. Uh, but it was always separate from the actual sales. Um, and the sales never got to the spectacle that it is now. What you have here is uh, creators and influencers that shift billions of dollars of goods in one day uh, out of the show, uh, out of their shows, showing skills and sort of their showtime skills. Uh, and this is not just cosmetics that you think are prone to aesthetics as shows, it's cars. It's cars coming out of customs and being sold. 200 at a time within a day in a form that has nothing to do with the traditional purchase journey and everything to do with entertainment. So we would expect streaming and social commerce to be very, very quick to move and be on the brink of moving to the metaverse because they're showing signs that entertainment is becoming more important in that industry. And finally, something that you really would not associate with entertainment, and that is stop trading. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with uh, GameStop and AMC and um, Wall Street bets on Reddit and meme stones. But what we saw seen last year with the explosion of meme stones is exactly what we will expect to see in the metaverse very soon, which is something that's always been serious and been done by certain people. It has been undergone a transformation. The transformation took the mode, the modality of entertainment. It was a bit silly, but silly was a feature, not a bug, because it was a way of experimenting something new and lowering the stakes, even though billions of dollars were at stake. So the GameStop frenzy did not take place 
on the metaverse, but the next game so frenzy, we will explain, expect that it will take place on the metaverse. So these are industries that if you look at them and you see signs of entertainment, that means that if you see the silly, it means someone is trying to do something new. And that new will in increasingly take place uh, on the metaverse. So what are the indicators? Is One is, how do you know that a domain is, is being radically rethought? Number one is you start seeing new faces that you didn't see before, new communities and classes. And the reason why I talk about a class is because these faces and communities are building an economy around what they're doing. So it's not just the creators, it's the creator economy. It's not just the Reddit traders uh, on Wall Street bets. It's those traders are creating their own economy, competing with the old economy. So that's number one. The second sign that you're looking for is new forms of currencies, whether a functional currencies um, like cryptocurrencies or new social currencies. In the case of the Reddit traders, memes were part of a social currency where the community recognized people within the community recognize one another uh, and they can they band together uh, as a class as an investing class that did not exist before. And third, and very importantly, you recognize that a domain is, is undergoing significant change when the reaction tends to be, wait a second, this is not how you're supposed to do things. This is not how you're supposed to do it. And this was very much clear on um, Reddit and meme stocks. That's not how you're supposed to trade stocks. That is actually somewhat illegal. Uh, and that tends to be the reaction of the legacy institutions. But it's also true of fashion. Now, people could have seen an established brand like Gucci be more playful uh, and say, this is not how you're supposed to do high-end fashion. Uh, and that friction is a sign of a domain that is undergoing transformation. And you see more and more on that friction on the metaverse. Actually, everything that happens on the metaverse results in, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You, you pay billions of dollars for real estate on the metaverse. That doesn't really exist that's not how you're supposed to do real estate development and it isn't but it will be once we're past that transformation uh, so what are we saying we're saying that if you think at the multiverse as a way of doing things you know as a model that can help us fill the gap between space and time right between the multiverse as a space that virtual immersive space they were nowhere near and the multiverse as a time on you know, that moment where more of our more of what we consider worthy in our life uh, takes place in a, in a digital space. Uh, so look at it as uh, we'll get to the metaverse once enough of the domains in our life will have gone through the transformation to then lend to the metaverse on the other side of it. And how do you know what domains are about to go through the transformation? You see it as domains that are embracing more and more entertainment. So you, the reason why you know that investing is, is about to go through a transformation is that it starts looking silly, it starts looking fun. It's not meant to be fun. That means there's something going on. And once we get to the other side of the transformation, maybe we'll stop being fun because by then it will be mature. We will have found a grown-up business model. But it needs to be a bit silly and fun and entertaining in that phase because it lowers the stakes, it makes it rewarding, it brings people together. Uh, and if you look at what is not going through that, entertaining phase then maybe that means that it's not about to be the metaverse that we're going to be to embrace so if you look at this for instance this is one of the different iterations of virtualizing the workplace in a metaverse space this happens to be by meta uh, by facebook facebook's mother company it doesn't really look like fun and to me what that suggests is that it's not a good representation of the destiny of the metaverse and what it does show is that we're actually trying to replicate what we're already doing, the same people we're already doing it in the same way, we're trying to digitalize it and bring it to the metaverse. It doesn't have a transformational um, nature of it. And therefore, I don't think that this is what the metaverse will end up looking like uh, because it's not fun. And by, be, by not fun, it means it's not signaling the necessary transformation. Uh, so if you look at it, as, as someone said, all models are wrong but some are useful. And the suggestion we're making is what we're saying is uh, thinking about the, in, the metaverse as a mode and as an entertainment mode is wrong, but hopefully it's useful in understanding what the metaverse is for and when we're actually going to get there. Uh, and I'd like to, you to keep this thought in mind as you go through the rest 
of the presentations with the rest of the speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Stefano. And uh, I will, you know, go to the next uh, uh, speaker, so I will not uh, lose any time. And I will present Alex Cascara. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Alex Cascarano and I'm Executive Design Director at SketchIn, the, studio, the design studio of, of BIP. As a design director, my work focuses on exploring the implication of living and interacting with technology to improve human life. At SketchIn, I'm responsible for developing the studio design culture and I'm head, head of immersive design practice. But let's go back to talking about the metaverse. Stefano in the previous talk gave us an insight into what we mean by metaverse and its main characteristics. In my role, however, I'm inclined to see this subject through the lens of design. Metaverse extends the concept of reality. There is no longer a distinct physical world and a virtual world, but also an hybrid world embracing both realities in a single ent entity. There are many opportunities arising from this new technological paradigm, but also many challenges that those who will have to design products and services in this new environment will have to face. Today, I would like to talk about the first three challenges that we as a design studio will face. First one uh, is about people and uh, how people's behavior and habits can change uh, in this context. I want to talk to you about uh, identity and avatars, one of the founding elements uh, on the metaverse. This is the first challenge. How does the concept of identity change and how to design avatars for different metaverse domains? In the future, we'll spend uh, a lot uh, of time in uh, metaverse. Our digital identities will become uh, just as meaningful as uh, our offline one. And as a result, we will be willing to spend time and money to, to shape them. People are rejecting labels and embracing uh, fluidity. And uh, as the metaverse move closer to becoming our preferred reality, this diversity of identities is reaching new levels. 60% of Gen Z say their identities span races, uh, cultures, and languages. And the shared virtual space uh, in the metaverse is offering the creative freedom they crave. This is a revolution, uh, is adding a substance to a brand's golden question. Who, who are we addressing? As the playing field for brands to connect with their, their audience becomes increasingly complex, the diversity that the, that the metaverse has created can offer a way to better connect with their audience and perhaps uh, even discover new one. Today, teens don't go to the mall uh, to try out new subcultures uh, or the latest trends. Instead, uh, they plug into video games like Fortnite to build their ideal avatars, complete with virtual clothes and the body types. Self-expression has no limits or rules, as being different is celebrated in the metaverse. They are able to create a version of themselves that feel more authentic for their body in the real world sometimes. And uh, we are in the age of post-physicality, physicality, sorry. And uh, the boundaries between real and virtual are increasingly blurred. After, uh, after all, who could claim that my identity on the metaverse is false compared to my identity in the physical world if it represents more of myself, my ideas? Users have the ability to create their own characters through skins and avatars that offer an unlimited pool of diversity. This is allowed, allowing them to express their identity in ways that in the offline world will never be able to provide. And the ubiquity of technology 
is blurring the lines between us and our avatar's identity. I want to show you uh, my different identities in Metaverse. Uh, preface, uh, I'm a very boring guy. Here is my avatar created with Vroid Studio, compatible with the, the VRChat Metaverse, uh, while I'm in the Prada Foundation. On the left here, it's me in Sandbox, another uh, great Metaverse, near a nice bored Hape Yacht Club, a precious NFT. And on the right, me in Horizon Venues, the Oculus Theater. This is also me. Uh, this is a personal project that I called Mindo, where you can create your own avatar created from biometric data expressing your emotions. As you can see, many possibilities of expressions, but here I introduce a second design challenge. How can I have my, the same avatar with me all the times? in all the worlds of the metaverse. How design for interoperable, interoperable hybrid experience between different metaverses, design for the interoperability. One of the pillars of the metaverse will be interoperability, meaning the ability of the components of this dimension to exchange information with, with each other and then be able to use it. Consider that uh, it's, we cannot design in, in silos and uh, not only we can provide the most flexible infrastructure win, but also we can make objects, goods and services usable in any context, in physical, virtual or hybrid world. Here, for example, Valentino in collaboration with Animal Crossing uh, allow you the, a copy of your digital dress with you all the times. While Jedu, a startup that are creating a mirrorverse, allow you to use your NFT, the hoverboard on the avatar, with an, an augmented reality context, making the NFT usable in different contexts. This is another example of how my avatar can exist in a different context, social, gaming, and even, I don't know, why, why not work, professional. Create or buying a digital asset and being able to use it, whatever you want, is certainly one of, I think, one of the biggest challenges that all players in the metaverse uh, industry are facing. And, uh, now, the third and final design challenges. Natural interfaces on hybrid reality. How define new models of interaction in the landscape of immersive technology? Making technology feel natural, intuitive, adaptable, understood by billions of people. Human hands help us uh, perform tasks creative work and everything in between. Uh, I think it's the ideal input uh, for the mass activities. Gestures typical of touch technology can now also be a part of the immersive reality experiences thanks to hand tracking, for example. In Horizon workrooms, you can collaborate with your colleagues and uh, your, your desk with exactly the same interaction inside, uh, inside the physical world. I have a friend who worked in the Meta Reality Labs for the project. And the thing that surprised me uh, is the, mo the most, uh, <laughs> is they spent a lot of time for designing the table to recreate interaction that are already familiar for the people who will be using uh, this, uh, this app. Project area the result of a collaboration between uh, uh, Facebook, Meta now, and Luxottica. The smart glasses resulting uh, from this partnership will have uh, a design very similar to that uh, for the traditional models, uh, thanks to miniaturized components that should include microphones, cameras, wireless modules, batteries, and various chips. 
The main objective of Project Aria is to provide the user with a discrete, discrete and always connected wearable that can understand what is in front of it. So the metaverse, I think, represents a real green field for designing new products and services. And uh, I think uh, we have a lot of opportunity to create uh, value, I strongly believe. And I strongly believe that can be uh, the new frontier of interaction between people, their needs, uh, and uh, companies. And uh, that's it. In a design metaverse from a design perspective, thank you very much. Uh, and I leave the, the stage to my colleague, uh, Giorgio and Stefano. Hi, everyone. I'm Giorgio. I'm a, a blockchain specialist here at uh, BIP. And what I do is usually help to develop more on the technological level about uh, Metaverse and a blockchain project. So let's go back to Metaverse and do a little bit of recap. <clears throat> so basically Metaverse, as all of my colleague explained much better than me, of course, is something that allow the user to interact with the virtual world through three-dimensional uh, asset. For example, um, let's imagine as was shown before with your with your um, your desk and recreating your own desk so you can interact with this. Of course, uh, it's built upon an infrastructure. And this infrastructure, usually the internet, as the internet play a very huge role and especially the connection and the hardware that build our internet and play a huge role and critical role how to build this uh, metaverse. And of course, all the gadget gadgets that uh, uh, that you uh, use to interact with the metaverse. So for example, let's imagine all the glasses, all the wearable that you can use, also the mobile phone. They actually help you to interact with this virtual world. And sorry. And the other things that can help you, that can help you a lot, is also the, the, the experience that the metaverse will recreate. The recreation of the metaverse will be, uh, for example, the things that you already play in the video games. And this could help you a lot to understand what is the metaverse actually is. It's a video games without limits, where you can actually have an experience and then create the experience itself. So, to sum up, what is actually Metaverse? Metaverse is an holistic world that exists in parallel with the real world that can offer to the user an immersive experience that was already present with video games or augmented reality tools. And it can help you to create a, a digital identity that actually is private to you on self and can be used to create and explore the Metaverse itself. So the Metaverse has a, had an evolution. The first one with the, a proto-Metaverse that it could be seen as the video games, such as SimCity or World of Warcraft. Both of these games allow you to recreate or to interact in the metaverse. So World of Warcraft, as maybe some of you knows, help you to interact with the different people and by creating your own avatar. Instead of SimCity, you create your own metaverse and you're actually a god within this metaverse. So you can destroy the city, rebuild the city, and do whatever you want. Then we got the new evolution to so the Metaverse 2.0 with this implementation of, of augmented reality or virtual reality. They basically enhance the experience of the consumer. Let's imagine when you go to the supermarket, when I was in Holland, there was this uh, experience that you can actually use your mobile phone to use augmented reality on product to see the provenance and what they were made of and etc. So this can help the user to have a better experience. And this brings us to Metaverse 3.0. Meta 3.0 is the combination of the two, so an experience and a video game-like experience, plus with the help of blockchain technology, you have the immersive world that can, can scale up and expand always. Then, of course, what you can do in the metaverse, you can do, as our colleague expressed, a lot of things. You can attend concert, you can buy dresses to dress up your avatar, you can also experience like games or even like customize your avatar and also even create uh, uh, meetings with your colleagues and experience these meetings. Now we have a, a few videos that I will show you briefly. 
about the experience of metaverse. So this is, for example, in augmented reality, you see there is the avatar and the interaction within a shopping mall. And it exactly, it seems exactly like the reality itself. Then of course there are like others like sorts of shop in the metaverse. Okay, here, sorry. Where you can shop and you can see directly how this interaction is done. And you see you got the avatar that interact with each other or buy stuff and customize their avatar. And then we got the last one about the cruiser ship where where this I get video is loading, where you can see is guide you on, on the cruiser ship and you can see inside it and the activity that are displayed on the cruiser. So actually, on a technical level, what is the metaverse and how is this composed the metaverse itself? So there is an infrastructure that is usually based by the 5G, 4G, the cloud, and the CPU, GPUs, and MEMS that compose the infrastructure that is built, where the metaverse is built upon. And the infrastructure is crucial, and that's why many companies also invest in this infrastructure to be developed. And then, of course, there is the human interface. That is also where many companies like Meta or even NVIDIA and also like non, let's say non-technological company invest is because give the opportunity to interact with the metaverse itself and to interact with the augmented reality. So imagine like the mobile phone. So um, for example, if we have an example is like um, um, Pokemon Go use augmented reality. And with this, you can interact with the real world with your Pokemon or with a, with a smart glasses, you can uh, see more things about the shop you're in and also have an interaction within maybe uh, a clerk that helps you to decide which dress to buy. And of course, another and important part of the architectural stack is the decentralization. Decentralization is one of the main part of the metaverse because without decentralization, we don't have a metaverse, but we have a, like a centralized entity that offer you an experience. So for example, like Fortnite and other type of game are like usually a centralized, but usually metaverse are built upon a decentralized um, infrastructure. And usually this one is a blockchain. This will help to get the metaverse to expand and ever change is a proposition of value and of course of growth. Then of course there is a special computing uh, technology that helps with the 3D, 3D engines, VR, R and XR and geospatial mapping help to interact uh, with the metaverse itself. And of course there are most uh, three, three important uh, value that uh, metaverse express. The creator economy, discovery and experience. Creator economy is the where the user itself will create an economy within the metaverse. So I think that the metaverse was shown before were mostly created by a company itself, but instead with the decentralized metaverse, we have the user itself that will create asset for the metaverse and this asset will be sold on the metaverse and it could earn money from it. And of course, discovery and experience is given by the discovery of new social creation as was shown before. So about the apes and everything and experience. So experience sport or like theater or like even concert and social event within the metaverse itself. So what are the like people that actually invest and the company that invest in metaverse? There are many of them and many of them are divided in the stack we've seen before. So the infrastructure, of course, there is like AWS, so Amazon, Azure, so Microsoft, and also like NVIDIA or Apple itself, they're investing in the infrastructure itself to build the metaverse and to build upon it. Of course, in the human universe, we got Oculus from uh, Meta and also like video game producer, like uh, uh, video, video game hardware producer, like PlayStation and Nintendo, they help to interact with the metaverse. And of course, with the centralization, we got many blockchain companies like Consensus, uh, Gemini, but also like big player like Microsoft they have to create a decentralized metaverse. Of course, in a special company and creator economy, we got many um, companies that actually work within video games. So uh, for example, Unreal, Unity, Epic, Roblox, actually develop video games, but they also help to create and expand this technology itself. In discovery part, we got many that actually are uh, video games uh, producer or reseller, but also like many player like Google or Facebook or Meta, that actually helped to develop this uh, part of the metaverse. And of course, we got the last one is the experience where many, many companies have their foot on because it's the easy part where you can actually 
beyond and develop something. Then of course, how does in this metaverse works? How this interaction works? So for example, to interact will uh, will work with is the environment of the metaverse. They give you a perception to the user. It is given by the sensor interface that as we've seen before, are more like the all the smart gadget that you have. So the smart glasses, the VR glasses, or the smartwatch or something else. They help you to interact with the with the metaverse. And then the user will decide an action. So the actuation interface and this action will interact with the metaverse. By giving so, we have a continuous stream of action and perception that's given to the user. So this of course require a high computing power and a high uh, a big infrastructure to uh, to to build this metaverse on because otherwise if we don't have like a fast connection a fast hardware that transmits this information to the user and the user interface could be very simple so for example mobile phone will not be able to interact to have an action stream together then of course we got the the architecture of the client server interaction in the metaverse so we got the free 3D interaction. And usually this will give the perception stream and action stream that we've seen before with the user and the client, and then actually interact with the metaverse server. So we got many, many clients that uh, interact with the metaverse. And, and this is where the blockchain actually <laughs> comes in, is because the blockchain will create an interconnection of words that could be massively scaled and be persistent and synchronous. We see this is one of the main point of the metaverse. So actually metaverse itself should be persistent, be scalable and be synchronous. So your action that will be done on one word could be transferred to another word. And this is can be done with the blockchain because blockchain have the opportunity to connect all this word together and not be silos within it. So for example, if you play uh, on Fortnite and you wanna switch with the same avatar on for example, Roblox or Minecraft or other things, you cannot because these are siloed in within one word. Blockchain can give you the opportunity to transmit this information and compute this information to the other world and continue to play or continue to interact. So actually what the blockchain play in this metaverse, what actually can give? The first of all is decentralization because blockchain itself is built as a decentralized network. This is the main point. And by giving this opportunity to the metaverse, the blockchain, the opportunity to scale and be able to always be persistent. Because if we build like a centralized application, we have a single point of failure. And this single point of failure give the opportunity to destroy the metaverse within one action. If the ser central servers fail, we're going to lose all information. Instead, with the decentralization, we give the opportunity to distribute this power, of course, and of course, information within many, many, many servers that can also be owned by the user itself. So we're going to empower the user. Then the other thing is interoperability, as we've seen before the possibility to interact with many, many words within one blockchain or many blockchain can interact with many words. So if we build, for example, on blockchain A, we can also create a bridge to blockchain B and our metaverse can be played also by user of blockchain B. By, this, by, doing, by doing so, you don't have any restriction about playing or interact within any blockchain. The other thing is very, very important is exchangeability. A blockchain gives the possibility to create an asset and be exchanged for cryptocurrency or another asset of the metaverse or different metaverse or even fiat. So you can uh, even monetize the asset that you create. And the other thing is also is the asset creation. Blockchain can give you the possibility to create any type of asset. It doesn't matter which one you want. It can be an image, it can be a video, it can be a coin, it can be a, it can be also something that a mix of it. So uh, um, an image that actually can become a coin, whatever you want. And the other thing is that is very important that blockchain with the tokenization can give the possibility to interact with the governance of the project itself and give the possibility to the user to decide the direction of the project. An example is um, Axie Infinity, where there is the token of the, of the metaverse. And this token is used to exchange uh, asset within the metaverse itself, but also for the governance itself, and also for um, gain the value of the token itself that can be exchanged for other token. And you can also have uh, then cash in with the fiat money. By doing so, the user have a full power on asset to create, governance of the project, and direction the project will go. It's something that new and many that was lacked before. So in the, let's say in the web 2.0 of the metaverse was not something that was possible in the proto metaverse. 
they were limited or within the server uh, the, the application itself. So for example, Fortnite, you can buy the skin, you can resell it, maybe, but all within Fortnite. And you cannot exchange for another asset and also transfer to another world. You're limited within one world. So blockchain is a normal potential about a creator, a creator economy that could be actually circular. So how does actually, how actually does it work, the creator economy? There is the creator has a journey where he, of course, he registers on the metaverse, he creates his own account, then a new account is created within the system, of course, of the user, then he creates an asset using 3D tools, also can be a, a JPEG or whatever you want, and then he uploads on, on the marketplace of the metaverse, and then here there is a price tag that can be decided by the, by the creator yourself, by a group of users, or can be like an auction, and then the user can interact with the item and decide whatever to buy or not. One is, is bought, then is sold, and receive the metaverse currency or the design currency of the metaverse. It is cost is exchange of value, and then the user will buy the item itself with it using the metaverse currency, and thus creating the circle of a uh, creator economy. So, in the end, what actually the blockchain gives to the metaverse is something that is new and empower the user itself. So we 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 come from like a, an economy that is company centric to a user centric so a prosumer economy where the user itself will be the center of the interaction and in the, and also of the economy of the system itself and something that new and the metaverse has the potential to develop this new type of economy and this new type of interaction so that's for me all thanks everyone Okay, now my turn. Good morning, everyone. Let's dive right in. Let me just see if, we can, if, if you can actually see my screen. Nope, yes, you can, very good. So, fashion and the metaverse is a match made in heaven because fashion is the industry that right now works the most with the metaverse. Uh, I cannot say for sure it's the industry that earned the most from the metaverse because numbers are not so widespread, but uh, for sure it is the situation where it, it worked the, um, the best until now. This is what we are going to see. We are going to see yet another definition of the metaverse because metaverse is still a, a, a kind of vaporous topic. And some caveats that I will... I will make for grounding the topic itself. And then a few examples, one good example and a few others, and a few reasons why the metaverse works well with the, with the fashion industry and some news, because we have some news and something about the future. So now let's start with the definition. Um, following my colleague Stefano Augello, who spoke about time, I will say, that the metaverse is the place where physical and digital come together to augment each other. Think of a concert in Fortnite. We already spoke about Fortnite many times today. Um, a concert in Fortnite is the physical that goes into the digital. While think of a pair of augmented reality sneakers, it happened with Gucci, um, which is the digital that goes into the physical world. So I want you to I want you to keep in, this in mind that the key to the metaverse is the physical and the digital augmenting each other. Now some caveats uh, that there are for keeping your expectation grounded to the reality. Uh, you mostly see pre-rendered promotional images of the metaverse. Okay, you know that. Because the real experience, uh, we have to admit that it's often quite ugly. And that is because of the technological limitation, the current technological limitation. Most of these experiences run on, smart, run on a smartphone or a browser. So they have to be more blocky. It's not like what you see on the left is more what you see on the right. And most of these experiences regarding fashion and luxury um, are from companies that are up to the so-called aspirational level, so from fashion companies that, that are from uh, up to the so-called aspirational level. That is, 
let's say Gucci, let's say Prada, um, not the absolute level that are the very, very pricey ones. Um, we go down to Nike, Benetton, the, the let's say mass market or premium premium ones. You don't see Chanel in the metaverse yet. You will see it very possibly in the future, but not yet. I guess it's because they don't want to spoil their image with something too popular and accessible, how these experiences are. Now, some spoilers. Okay, so most of the fashion in metaverse experiences fall into two, two categories. There are virtual worlds and experiences. And virtual spaces where you can go, like for example, where virtual spaces where you can go and dress your avatar and visit, visit virtual stores and hang out and play mini games and, and so on. This image on the left is from the, is from the, wait a second, sorry. Let me check if you're actually seeing my presentation. Yes, you are still, okay. Um, it's from the South Korean uh, experience, uh, South Korean platform named Zepeto. And the other category is the digital collectibles. They can be NFTs, but they can be something oh, like digital asset outside of the NFT world. Here I put actually a little joke. Uh, this, is an, this bag is an unauthorized NFT of a Birkin bag. Um, from uh, let's say creator creator that made money uh, out of selling this uh, NFT and Hermes sued the the creator himself. So go if if you're interested, you can go deeper into this matter. Is that it is very interesting. Now the, we we can see one very compelling example that is Philip Plain. Basically, the company Philip Plain made it all. Okay. So they made one virtual world within the central end. They made one non-exclusive NFT collection. I say non-exclusive because everybody could buy one. Um, but you could, um, you could use these NFTs of these like ugly little pixel monsters uh, if you collect them all to, to earn other NFTs. And you can use these other NFTs that were like 3D models for earning um, physical statues. They are currently sold, sold out. Um, they open a physical slash NFT gallery in Milano where, where uh, there are, with some physical statues sold as NFTs again in an online auction this time. And if you buy the NFT, you get the big statue also if you have the space for it. And one NFT, again, physical slash NFT sports shoes collection, where you buy the NFT and you get the physical shoes. And again, and also um, as a side, crypto payments on their e-commerce website. So you can see, again, all these are situations where the digital and the physical experience get together. Okay. Um, sorry, okay, again. And they mix and they complement each other. Uh, other brands um, explore the metaverse. Gucci above all, they basically made everything. They put a foot basically in all the platforms out there with vir virtual worlds. And they also made one year ago, exactly one year ago, they made the augmented reality sneakers that I was talking about before. And they also made NFTs. And we will see some news after about Gucci. We have Nike with their Nike land on Roblox. Um, and also with virtual sneakers uh, investments. We have Benetton, which recently made a physical store in Milano that looks like it exactly looks like its counterpart in, within Roblox. And in the digital store, you can get um, discounts, you can get coupons to use in the physical stores. You can see again all the physical and digital that come together. And But what are the reasons of such love? Well, first of all, fashion leads on trends and, and experimentations. So the metaverse is trendy right now and it's very experimental. So they match absolutely together. 
fashion lives on visuals and the metaverse is mostly visual. It's a place where you can go and see things. And most of all, fashion is lifestyle, is brand identity. And an interactive and immersive participation to the brand gives the customer a new way and a deeper way of owning their, pers- they, their favorite brand. Imagine you can go inside a virtual world and you can own uh, some, you, you can dress your avatar. It is another way of owning the brand. And this is very important to these kind of lifestyle uh, companies. And again, digital collectibles, uh, they give people with little money, like let's say me, even, even though I wouldn't buy it anyway, um, a way of owning something from their fairy, favorite brand. Well, rather than me think of a, a kid, Roblox is aimed to kids uh, under 15, 16 years old. Um, so most of them don't have the money to buy the Nike, even the Nike shoes, so they can own them inside there for a little money, little as like 10 euros, let's say. And they give people with a lot of money a way of owning something, some unique status symbol. You, can, you, you, you buy your NFT, like you buy your bored ape, and you buy your NFT of the Dolce & Gabbana collection, something like that. Some news. These are from like literally a few days ago. Marco Bizzarri, the CEO of Gucci, said that the meta they committed again way more to the metaverse. They said the metaverse is already a very real place for us. And Nike, the CEO of Nike, during the earning calls, call uh, since, said that since its launch, a total of 6.7 million players from 195 countries has visited Nike Land on Roblox. So. Uh, even though this may not be disruptive yet, but it is very looked into and it is already uh, giving some numbers. So what about the future? Well, nobody has the crystal ball, of course, so I, I cannot say much. We just have to wait and see, but um, the hype of the, on the metaverse will last a little bit more, a few months. Uh, it won't last forever. There's always need for the new buzzword, of course. But I believe that the metaverse itself will slowly evolve in the next years into a viable product for most of the businesses. Uh, again, I don't have the crystal ball, but it is, this is very possible. Also because big companies like Meta itself and Microsoft are, are investing billions into that. Um, it's going to be slow, though, because the technology has to evolve. The, the final, let's say, the, the, the aim right now are the augmented reality glasses, and they will take like five to ten years to, to be, let's say, viable, feasible. So until then, the metaverse will still be used as an advertising medium by lifestyle companies. We said about fashion, but think of cars, think of watches. It's very possible that many of these companies will, will try to go inside. What about the far future now? Uh, well, the metaverse will reach the so-called plateau of productivity. Um, and it will become... We will have those augmented reality glasses. We will have better virtual experiences. And at that point, it will become some form of new normal. It is very possible unless the world collapses first. So most of the companies will have to or will want to approach the metaverse for their business. So there is a lot of room, very possibly a lot of room for many people and many companies and many of you to to explore and to work. Uh, and what about digital collectibles? Well, they will still exist. I guess they will exist forever, just like the trading cards exist for the Italian people, figurine panini, calciatori, something like that. They still exist, or Pokemon if you want. So uh, just like that, it, it exists today. Digital collectible will keep existing because people like collecting things. So this is it. Thank you very much, and see you in the metaverse. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you.
if we know is a, a, a metaverse, what we can do, why we are talking now about a metaverse. So I don't know if you, if you have uh, any question from our audience. If not, I would love to ask you a question. I don't know if we can invite you back to our digital stage in the question you will get, you will draw me who is the best to to, to answer. So I'd like you to join me here. Hi Stefano, Stefano, Alex and uh, Giorgio. So thank you very much. It was really interesting. I really enjoyed even the different angles that you gave to us in order to better understand uh, this uh, phenomenon just right now. So my question is, while I was uh, listening all your uh, speeches, I, I had in my mind uh, uh, Second Life, you know, because uh, I was a nerd in uh, that time. So it was 2003, they launched Second Life and it was like uh, a new discovery of uh, a digital ecosystem. Brands, American Apparel to some ecosystem being there, well, to do what uh, was not clear at, at the beginning, but they launched products, they sold uh, services. So now it seems that and probably the virtual reality is uh, you know, giving the, the second life uh, a new way of immersive experience. But my question is, we're talking about uh, decentralized platforms and decentralized metaverse and uh, the, quite the opposite. So meta and horizon and all these kind of things related to important brands. So if uh, you are a company who wants to buy uh, a piece of land, going to land, you're going uh, Roblox or this kind of platform. So where is, uh, in your opinion, uh, the opportunity? So for the central metaverse or a central one? Stefano Augello? Uh, yes. Uh, first, this is not financial advice, as people <laughs> say. So ultimately, uh, what you have to do, there's a very, the reason why you should invest in the metaverse now is very different from what you should do it five years or 10 years from now. Uh, ultimately, I think everything will, 90% of what we're doing right now, the metaverse will end up looking very silly when you think about it 10 years from now. Uh, so do it uh, not because you think well, what you do now will represent the ultimate business case and will set you for the next 30 years of success. It will inevitably change. You do it because you experiment. On one hand, you can experiment with it. On the other, it can have a speculative purpose and you can get lucky. Uh, and quite a large number of people are actually investing on, on it on a bubble or speculative um, purpose. Uh, and others are doing it because they want to flex their muscles. So once it gets to flex their muscles, I think pretty much everything, whatever you want to do it that makes sense for you, start doing it. That's, the level of familiarity with the metaverse and everything around it is so low that as long as you start, you can start pretty much anywhere. However, the, what I would say, when it comes to the bigger philosophical difference of centralized versus decentralized, uh, I think that what the metaverse will end up being will be something different from how the visionaries thought of it. So if you look at what the internet turned out to be, it, it's very different. For better or worse, it's very different from how it was envisioned in the 80s. Uh, and some of the founding principles that uh, the internet was meant to be based upon, uh, they've been betrayed. Uh, and, and part of that betrayal has been in order to let it grow. So um, the internet grew also because certain key elements of it were centralized uh, and centralization allowed for a better more consistent and easier user experience allowed for a certain degree of stability and trust uh, that you don't necessarily get when everything is entirely centralized uh, at the same time decentralized uh, some people think that that problem will be solved by the blockchain because that's a consistent technology that allows for decentralization while preserving um, the safety for not necessarily the user experience uh, but in general, I think what the metaverse will end up being is uh, something very really different from how it was envisioned and, and from what it is now. We're at the stage of, if you remember the, the first iPhone apps, one of the first viral iPhone app was one where you would sort of 
you did like this and pretend that you were drinking a glass of beer. It was incredibly stupid. But it was a way for people to experiment and to understand what made iPhone apps successful and what made them stick it and, and how the thing worked. So we're at that stage. Um, and clearly, in retrospect, we'll end up making a different use of it. But right now, if your way into the metaverse is the equivalent as a company, is the equivalent of that iPhone beer app, as long as you're aware of it, do it and do it wherever you feel comfortable doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and it was uh, not an easy question. So thank you for doing this. So I don't know if we have, probably we have more questions. So I see a question from uh, Francesco Spano. Hi, everyone. I have a couple of questions. So it's not going to be easy. <laughs> Do you think that we are going to face a couple of future, speaking about the so basically answering me to the question I don't know if you want something more well <clears throat> I think uh, very often uh, is a matter of time not arriving first but at the right time and I think uh, there is a strong struggle between uh, the centralized metaverse uh, like meta and the decentralized the metaverse Probably the, mob, the, the model that is closer to the needs of the user will win. And I'm not sure that the big technology companies will win this time. And uh, I think it's a, an interesting landscape. Uh, and uh, maybe in the future, we, we can see growing a new company based on different models about data, for example. Maybe could be the winner of the of the war of the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, I remember when uh, we were talking about uh, Bitcoins, that actually it's, uh, you know, the stereotype of decentralization. A lot of people said uh, the winner will be the person or the company that will find a way to give you a safe access to your uh, Bitcoin, even and still keeping the centralized uh, is uh, you know is the system because at the end as stefano said every time that we are approaching decentralization it feels that like it's uh, free the freedom of every services and uh, products but then we lose a password when we an access we want someone answering our calls so it's, uh, it's, it's really true so, very much we have the last uh, question i will have to tell you or we have, yeah, Glaucia and uh, will the metaverse include data mining? How will the metaverse affect the financial industry? So they are really different, but if you want to give a quick answer to Well, data, according to, according to me, let's say the metaverse will generate a lot of data think of bio data for example okay you put the vr glasses or the future ar um, ar glasses and they will collect basically what you're looking and where you're looking and so yes there will be a lot of data mining there going on um, a lot of data reselling a lot of uh, Things with data. So the answer is basic is very possibly yes. For the second the second uh, question, actually, it goes down to uh, seeing what happened again with the internet until today. So uh, it started as a hobbyist, basically, uh, com context where a person like on their computer, on their room, were writing HTML code and they were writing um, their, their web page and it ended up with Facebook, Meta, whoever, Google and so on. So yeah, we call them monopolies. They are extremely big. Of course, there are always like um, 
there are always alternatives that are not so monopolies. So you always have anyway some kind of choice. So I believe that the metaverse, however, it will evolve. It will basically evolve like the internet. There will be big companies and there will be uh, smaller, like more nerdy probably alternatives that in turn may become bigger at some point and will be replaced by other smaller ones. So... Uh, financially, in general, I'm not a financial expert, so I don't know what to say about it, but uh, the evolution will be very possibly like that. I would add something on financial services, and uh, the, we stay, we're at the stage where it's not yet the metaverse that impacts the financial services, the financial services that have an impact on the metaverse. And ultimately, as they say, the best way to predict the future is to make it is and we're at a stage where our financial services companies have the opportunity to not to wait for change to happen upon them but to drive it and if you look at what's the difference between second life and talking about the metaverse now is fundamentally the second the same thing we're getting the same hype and if you look at the headlines that were that we had about 15 20 years ago about, about second life they're word by word the same as the metaverse the difference is that i think there are there's there's greater push behind it. And there are specifically some companies that by their nature and their capabilities are able to wheel things into existence. And I think one of them is Stripe. Uh, Stripe is a fantastic company uh, that has the plans on generational thinking. Uh, they plan 20, 10, 20, 30 years ahead. Uh, and by combination of talent, financial capital, and this time horizon, they together with others are able to wield the metaverse into existence and uh, square has also been investing has renamed it and in, 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 in started investing a lot in the metaverse so if you think about the big believe, believers with the capabilities to make things happen quite a few of them are uh, financial companies now there's a big difference between them and hsbc has i think bought a plot of land in the metaverse but it's a different nature of engagement, right? So if you look at Square, it's a complete organizational restructure, including a change in name, a fundamental restructure of their whole company because they believe in Web3. If you look at Stripe, uh, it's not the BN and end all of it for them, but they made significant investments into that. They, they, they included in their focus, and when they're focused on something, they deliver. Uh, so financial services are now as influential uh, is influential, probably more influential on um, the metaverse than fashion, even though fashion is, gets more of the headline stories. But it's not the high street banks that are onto it yet. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano. And uh, thank you for staying with us and answering all these uh, questions. The topic is really hot, as you underlined. And um, I'm so happy that you really explained uh, the metaverse from different point of views. It was uh, really important to understand the impacts and uh, not just what uh, the headlines, as you said, Stefano, are going to, you know, give us an idea about that, of course, but not uh, the deep understanding of what is and what could be. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, see you next week for the next Innovation Talks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you.